has a Holly fuel injection system here. And believe it or not, Summit has it in stock. It's quiet in here today. Hmm. Nobody in line. Monday, 5 o'clock. This is time to come. Nineteen seventy five International. This ought to be interesting. What do you think? It's cool looking. I know it. It needs some poppy spatina. It does. Yep. Yeah, we'll back it up and get started. Real tank's nice and accessible. Yeah, that'll not too be, bad. That'll be easy. So yeah, we'll pull this cinder out here after we blow all the dirt off. And then Put the fuel pump in the tank there. Yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. Do some before and after. This is Holly carburetor and Yep. Hmm. Figure this bad boy out. Yeah, I sure hope this fuel injection does better than that. I do believe it will, though. Cool. A little smoky? Yeah. <laughs> smells kind of nice. Got a nasty old dead bird. Dump truck's clean. What do we got? We got the skeleton of a snake. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Just looking around, seeing all the dead stuff. Awesome. What? Oh, here's some live stuff. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Don't mess with that. Mm. We'll leave that alone. What we got is an International 345. Nothing special here, but it's points type ignition. We're going with electronic. I'm going to throw a Pertronics in it and then make sure everything's good there. Pop the fuel injection on. Electronic ignition, neither of the kits that they sold me fit. So we're gonna just have to put the points back in. It'll still trigger the holly. Uh, I just wanted to go a little more modern. So we're gonna pop this sending unit out. And, well, sending unit, this top piece off. And then once we get that off, that's where we're probably, hopefully everything's okay and we can hang the fuel pump from it. Yeah, we'll drain this. I'll just throw the finger over it and you can move dump the bucket. It. You can dump it in the bucket. Got the bucket's it. Oh, oh. Hey! Nice. I don't 
know if I want to put that back in there. We'll see. But probably not. All that junk. All rusty. So yeah, we're gonna run a pre and a post filter. Get all that nasty mess out of there. Oof. Good job, Zach. Yeah. Guy brought over what he said was another fuel tank, and he said, "Here's another tank." We got excited, but that's a hydraulic very wet excited. tank. Yeah, very, very. Excited. But that's a hydraulic wet tank, and it's not gonna work. Oh well, what are you gonna do? I think O'Reilly got what we needed. Yeah. All except for cool air. It's hot today. Well, we went to O'Reilly, didn't make a list, got what we thought we needed, and then left and remembered what we really needed. It's okay, we weren't far. Right? We got some fuel lines so we can plumb the fuel in the tank and an air cleaner because it had this old oil bath air cleaner on it. Check this out. So this, a lot of people don't have never seen these, but this is the way an air cleaner worked before. So what it does is it pulls air into the engine, but it pulls it down through here, pulls it through the oil, and then the oil filters out the dirt. It's called an oil bath air cleaner. And no. <laughs> We're hoping all this goes okay. It's cleaning the tank out. That's what we're getting. And it is nasty. Voila, fuel pump module. So the pump I use is for a 96 Chevy Silverado uh, Vortec motor and they put out plenty of pressure. They're designed to work at 58 PSI so the pressure rating is good and the flow, you're not needing a whole bunch for this thing. I think we're good on the flow. I want to say it's 38 gallons per hour or something like that. Yeah, I use some uh, fuel injection hard hose and that's it. That'll drop in there and bam. There we go. Fuel pump. Got my connections positive, negative. Even made them red and black. So I want to fix them. Nice. Connections, piece of threaded rod through here. And this is kind of a flimsy little deal with a, it's got a plate that reinforces it, but it's what was there. So it's 
what we got. So as I say, we're gonna dance with the one we brought. Okay. Now we'll use this piece for a template to make a gasket. And then once the gasket's made, just drop this dude in and we're ready to go. So this goes on top to reinforce it. I'm gonna make two gaskets, one underneath and one on top. That way it gives it extra squeeze. Got our handy dandy power probe here. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one. This is probably one of the best tools I own. You will keep it untangled. Audio off. Listen close. Let's see if it runs. Ready? Cool. Means the fuel pump's gonna work. That's good news. Here's the Holly Sniper we got. It's a two barrel system and I keep wanting to call it a projection, but that's for all you old guys back they made a Holly projection throttle body system back in the 90s and it was junk. So when they came out with this I was real skeptical. But it looks like we're only going to use one vacuum port. And then, that is it. The vacuum advance, and that's all. But yeah, this is just bolted on and go. Guys, hopefully no one's disappointed, but I read the instructions last night. Most of them, not all of them. Don't be too, uh, too disappointed in me. But I read a good portion of the instructions. This just fits perfectly for that 2300 two barrel. We need to get a vacuum cap right there. Ooh. Done, check. So I'm gonna route everything over to that side because that's where the battery is, all the power. We can pull the wires up here. We got bracketry and goodness and all that to hook to. Yeah, should be fairly straightforward. This is a little tight. You can come off with a 90 right there. Hopefully. Come on. Yeah. Just 
hook into one of these holes here. How about right there? Perfect. And that's it. Okay. Let me get a fitting and make sure we're not going to have fitment issues here. Clear. What's it not gonna clear? Just a cover on it? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I gotta come out with a fitting, and I mean, it's just right there. Oh. It is right there. Huh. In here. And I tweaked an AN fitting a little bit. And got it where it clears. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it down. I'll make that line first and see where I need to go with it and then bolt this down. And I don't think it'll leak, but I guess we'll see. I don't like it, but there is no room at all. So we'll see how it goes. If we can drop it in the dirt first. So we got our line cut there. Just take this collet, and these are super, this is soft line whole lot better than the older steel braid. Zach is feeling some pain. Slip it over there. Spray it. I usually just take some kind of oil. Something like that. Spray it in there and then you just take the fitting. Thread it together as far as you can by hand. Crank it around. Then we'll get a couple of metric wrenches. And then just take them and tighten it up. It's literally that easy. And we're going to do that multiple times. Show you what that's like once we get her done. So I can get this mounted. What's that? First of, First of multiple. Okay. There will be, I think, a total of just three lines on this one. Not a ton of yeah. Look at that. Clearance, Clarence. Nice. Yes. so we can put the oxygen sensor in and we have this plate that the oxygen sensor screws into and you put it on there with the gas that they give you and you just clamp the light down <laughs>
take this temperature vacuum sensor out or this plug if I can get the plug out, one or the other. Man, that was a gusher right there. That was that gum, man. Woo! A lot of pressure on it. That's kind of fun. That was. Yep. Well, okay. Yikes. Now I can put a sock on it. Get that tightened up and blow that off with air. Get that all cleaned up and make all of our electrical connections, which are going to be nice. Coolant temp sensors right there. Wideband oxygen sensor right here. Both our battery connections. Then all we got to do is find a, a, a distributor signal to come from right here. And all we got to do is come in through this hole, which I'll put a grommet around as much as I can. And we got to find an ignition hot signal, and that's it. Well, these things are pretty simple. Pretty simple, man. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that little mm -hmm. splash we got. Here's our main part. A lot of this we'll be good trying up and not using. Whoa! Don't need that. Yeah. Super cool. Then we'll run this line along the frame with the fuel lines and just zip tie it all together. Damn, look at that. Golden. Here's our ignition hot. And they're all labeled real nice. I've been happy with that so far. This one, I think, yeah, that's the coil negative input right there. Ignition. Power ground. Oh, that's it. Okay. Negative. But I do have heat shrink. So I think we'll be okay. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, of course. Maybe. Sure. Put your little crack torch here. I got it. I figured it out. So here's our main harness. That's the wide band. I'm gonna kind of. That is where the handheld hooks into. Forgot we gotta get that out here as well. Okay, my main connection. I think we can come up here and throw a couple of uh, screws in the firewall there. Come here, around, power. with 
the positive lead coming out of it. So I'm just hooking up to that for the positive. Yes, this is what we want to be doing when it's 104 degrees outside. You know, yep. using a blowtorch, a little handheld. Look at that. Nice. Okay, so we have to go to the wizard. 550, 849, 2 row, 2300. Next. Okay, number of cylinders. 8. Next. Engine displacement. You slide at 345 cubic inches. Three forty-five. Three. Okay. Next. Target idle speed. We'll say. What do you think? Five fifty. Okay. Cam type. Stock. CD box magnetic. Coil negative. Start. Start loading. You can hear it. the ignition to complete the operation. Let's see. We should be neutral there. Let's see if we, if we should be able to sink it. So it should say sink. Uh, get my... Um, we got to get a different, uh, a different ignition source. Good job. Here we go. Don't see any drips below. All right. I'm looking right here, real quick. Okay. Well, I heard something. Okay. Go again. Yep, Nothing so far. Yeah.
loud as all get up, isn't it? Yeah. We fired it up a while ago, but this one, first fire up, we got it all full of coolant. We got everything looking good, 12.4 volts. Let's make sure it's in neutral. Yep, okay, here we go. Looking old truck for sure. Dig it. Happy with that. I think he will be too. Quick comparison carburetor. Better. 